We're dining inside the Swan Reserve at Walt Disney World. Let's see. Hello everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Jay. You're watching the Theme Park Movies and we're here for the very first time at the Swan Reserve affiliated with the Swan and Dolphin Resort areas. Their newest tower here in Walt Disney World to dine in a Mediterranean style restaurant. So, um, where? Amare. Yes. Um, Amare made me feel like it was Italian, but I guess that's not... Do you know what Amare means? Is it... Well, Amore, Amore would mean love. It's too love. Oh. To love. Well, I too love you. It's a perfect <laughs> night for us to eat. Uh, we've been looking for some good uh, Mediterranean food over here in Florida, so we're hoping that Amari pr provides that. And we've been dining at a lot of the dolphin affiliated restaurants. Yeah, we have a video on Rosa Mexicano, Disney's newest restaurant. We also have a video on Shula's, which is also. Yeah, Shula's we loved. Like the steak there was awesome. So I have very high hopes as we feel like we've been pretty impressed by the assortment of different dining options they've had at the Swan and Dolphin Affiliated Resorts. This is their newest tower. Um, it's beautiful. It has sweeping views of uh, pretty much a lot of the Disney resorts, the higher up in the tower that you go. Um, you can see Tower of Terror, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they have the Fantasia Mini Golf that's yeah. right over here. Literally right across. Yeah. Like it's almost like an amenity that, I, I would, it doesn't come with the resort, but you could literally walk across do Fantasia Mini Golf. Um, and then you can see a dolphin right across the way as well. Uh, I am very hungry. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how the views are. I'm also cool, just we've never been inside this yeah. tower before, so it would be nice to see it. And also, I do want to mention, uh, usually when you go to the Disney resorts, if you're driving, you will show your dining reservation, and then mm -hmm. you won't have to pay for parking. But here, because it's run by Marriott, not Disney, there isn't going to be an attendant there. You're just going to take a ticket, ticket yeah. and then you can ask for a validation from if the restaurant. Don't. Which we didn't mention that in our Rosa Mexicano video, which yes. we should have. Because it's good to know, because parking is like 30 bucks here. Yeah, no, it's and pretty you expensive. you don't want to be paying that. Yeah, and if you do the Fantasia Mini Golf as well, uh, zero to three hours parking is free. Above, yeah. above three hours you have to pay. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Join us for our dinner to love <laughs> at the Swan Reserve. All right, we are heading towards the check-in at the lobby, which will be uh, to the left after you exit the parking area. You can actually see the dolphin right up there. So right as we walked up, you can see this really nice floral arrangement. And then uh, right past it to the right, you're gonna see the lobby, obviously. Um, you're actually gonna park way back over here. Uh, this is kind of like where you would have Ubers and stuff pick up, and you can see the Tower of Terror all the way in the back there. Let's see if I could zoom in. There it is. They like these automatic moving doors here. It's very let's see if, Marriott. Yes. Let's see if we can figure it out. Are you trapped? We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. We made it. I knew we would. All right, so it's good to note that you actually put on the first floor, but the lobby check-in is on the second floor, right at the top of these escalators. All right, we're gonna head up. Chandeliers look very nice. All right, we've made it to the lobby. There's a bar. Looks very nice. Now look at these views, Sam, of the dolphin. It's like the perfect shot of these two resorts. So I feel like I'm seeing a lot of peacock kind of artwork here. I'm not sure if maybe that's the icon of this resort. Look, this is like a live peacock, just like right here in the center. The bar is very nice, and we have a little bit of time before our reservation, so maybe we'll go outside. So Sam was looking at the menu. You can get some of the stuff that you can get at the restaurant at the spa, which is nice. Suvlaki. Yeah. Flatbread. So it looks like a Mediterranean Dude. like food is kind of like the theme or one of the uh, notable dining options here. All right, let's see, uh, let's see how it is outside. They do look like they have a pool area over here. Obviously, it's uh, only accessible, I believe, to patrons of the Swan Reserve. It is starting to rain bad out here, but they do have an outdoor bar and a pretty nice use of the tower as well. Seems very secluded back here. It looks like there are more, I guess those are swans, maybe not peacocks. All right, so I was a bit mistaken before. The escalators actually skip a floor. So the escalators will take you to the third floor and that's actually where Amari is, right on the third floor. You can see here all the wines. 
they have available. Looks like right past Amara they actually have their coffee shop. Which looks like they have a lot of good stuff in here. The quick services I've seen at the Swan and Dolphin Resorts seem to be very like uh, like high scale to me. Like look at these little chef salads. Yeah, I don't feel like you can find that at like a standard Disney hotel. Ham and jam. These are the. This is one of the boxes you get if you did the marathon. Another one of their sandwiches. And look at these cookies. The banana bread. And Sam, you were bringing up before the whoopie pies, right? Look at that. All right, we're in. Definitely modern decor. Blue accents. Very nice. All right, we've been seated, and I would say the decor is very modern. It reminds me of Amatista Cookhouse almost at a Universal. It actually reminds me a lot of Narcoosie's. Oh, true. The blue and the wood. Yes, I wouldn't. I don't. Narcoosie's isn't really a Mediterranean menu, though. So the menus. Coastal, do. so it's like similar. Mediterranean is also kind of coastal. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, they have a pretty extensive wine menu, and the special tonight is porterhouse steak. I'm sure it's pretty expensive, but I am craving some steak, so uh, let's see uh, what drinks they may have be going on here. All right, so let's take a look at the menu. It's two sides. The appetizers, they have hearth fried tiger, or, yeah, hearth fired, sorry, tiger prawns, Paul Petty, charred octopus, calamari, salad, um, I think they're, they have a, or they have a taverna salad, spring salad, and I think they're known for this amare salad. They also have signature flatbreads, and I think Sam's gonna go with that salvaki, and a lot of the entrees here look very good. I also do like the plates here. They've got some style and pizzazz to them. Okay, so we're starting off with a mocktail. I feel like I'm a mocktail guy. Wait, so I don't actually think it's a mocktail. Remember like there's those drinks that just like have like imitation. Well, it has imitation champagne in it. Yeah, so but it's not technically considered a mocktail. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Like they would still card you. Remember we had to, we went over this at Narcoosie. Yeah, so this is a non-alcoholic cocktail. Yes. So there's no. So zero kids, proof. kids can't order that. Yes. Imitation champagne, tropical flavors, fresh fruit at the top. Uh, do you remember the name of it? Nope. I will plug it in. It'll be somewhere over here. It was the only drink that they had that was not yeah. alcoholic. All right, so we got the sesame bread. I didn't was able, wasn't able to finish the drink. You do taste that champagne flavor over there. The bread looks very good too, Sam. Looks like it has uh, sesame seeds. Yeah. And um, then you got some, looks like hummus and then olive oil and um, olive tapenade in the center of the hummus. It looks, it looks It's a very good. nice presentation. And I think the dishes are really beautiful too. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give this a seven. It's, it's, you can taste the imitation champagne, so it's heavy on that. Obviously, no proof. Uh, and you taste the citrus flavor, so I think they mix very well together. It looks very pretty. All right, Sam's gonna try this bread out with the hummus. So I guess those are some olives on top? It's olive tapenade and olive oil. Ooh, let's see how it spreads. Yeah, yeah, get a little bit of that on there. I hope there's some anchovies in this. Yeah, I was wondering if it was anchovies. I don't feel like they would though. Ta tapenade is usually made with... I love anchovies. I love anchovies on my pizza, I love anchovies on my Greek salads. I do not. <laughs> Big fan of the choves. Very warm. Bread looks good, and I'm happy that it's sesame seed. Um, you know, I feel like everyone's going for the sourdough breads lately everywhere. So. Yeah, I feel like we've eaten too much sourdough recently. I am sourdough bread, so I'm, I'm excited for some sesame seeds. Very right, good bread. It's very soft, warm, nice, crunchy exterior. It's everything, you know what good bread is made of. It's what you want. I like this bread. I do think it's a little salty, but I feel like that's just... Well, I feel like olives. when you have the olives, yeah. Yeah, olives usually are salty. I almost would want just the hummus on my bread, but that's just my personal preference. I like the presentation of it. How it came. Yeah, no, I think it looks very nice. It has those blue accents. I'll go six. 
Six, okay. I think the bread itself is very good. I think the hotness is good. Yeah, hot and fresh, so we yeah. get points for the hotness. It definitely is a good bread service. All right, we got the polpetti, Sam. Uh, what is inside this? This is tomato braised lamb and beef meatballs with crispy potatoes, saffron aioli, and a roasted pine nut crumble. So the pine nut crumble's on the top. You know, this yellow is the saffron aioli. Definitely a very pretty dish, right? Right. It's aesthetically, looks very nice. You were scared of it because it I'm has lamb. I'm not scared of it. I just prefer not to eat lamb. I do eat lamb. Um, but, Sam, you have you do like gyros with some lamb. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't. It's not my go-to. Mm. Also, I don't know how I feel about the pine nut crumble. Very tender. It looks. I can bar. see how tender it is. It's juicy. The lamb does add a distinct. It's not too lamby. <laughs> lamby. But. You, you get the flavor. That unique flavor lamb has. With the saffron with the aioli. And then the crumbles at a crunch. So you have these two differing textures. The kind of like the delicateness of the meatball and then the crunchiness of the top area. Um, the saffron has a unique flavor too, as well as the potatoes. Oh wow. Got it more there. It's good. I like it. I think it's seven. I think it's really good. Um, can't say much more about that. I mean, today's taste all day is some of the best palpetti I've had. So, but I'm not a palpetti aficionado, guys. So, I don't go around eating palpetti all the time. But just so you know, this doesn't come from a seasoned veteran of this dish. But I think it's really good for me. All right. So dinner is served, Sam. You got the Salvaki, and look at those little metal skewers. It looks legit. So you can get uh, chicken or steak or combo. So I did the combo so I could try both. And it has some crispy potatoes. Are you gonna turn it, like use a little pitas to turn it into like a sandwich, or are you gonna just try to go meat first? Um, I think I'm gonna just try a piece of, I'm gonna try the meat on its own. Okay. Ooh, it looks, it looks really good. That's very good. Oh my god. The chicken is so juicy. And there's pesto on it, which I love pesto. I can't wait to make the sandwich, but I wanted to try the meat on its own first. Alright. Well, maybe save your rating until you make the sandwich. Oh, yeah, actually, try that out. This got dark. Maybe yeah, they just lowered the lighting. It's super tender. This meat is really, really good. I'm excited to make my little sandwich and come back. Okay, we'll make your sandwich first. All right, we have the sandwich. The pita is super fresh. So good. I'm used to having white sauce with my souvlaki. Well, I think there is a white, it's a yogurt sauce right here. This is hummus. No, there's yogurt around top. Look at the creamy stuff. Really? Yeah, I could have swore that said yogurt yeah. sauce on There's no yogurt, no yogurt sauce? sauce? Oh, wow. No. But I actually, I like it with the hummus. I like the cucumber. I also really like these crispy potatoes. Like it just, you got all those different textures in here, but like, Pita is excellent. Like it's just you taste how fresh it is. You can see like the nice grill marks on it. Yeah. Well made. The, the meat's fantastic. And is the pita like uh, flaky, soft? soft? Fresh. I'm gonna go eight. Nice. A high end Slovaki. I'm happy they got the eight. I'm excited for my steak. All right. This is the porterhouse. Um, it comes with a, uh, what is this sauce again, Sam? A remoulade or? That is a red wine sauce, I believe. Red wine sauce. It has some potatoes, steak and potatoes, but it also has some onions on the side. Pearl onions, carrots. Yes, yeah, so you can see it, yeah, all that right there. And then when you look at a porterhouse, guys, just so you know, this side right here, the bigger side is the New York strip, and then this side is the filet mignon. 
So, Sam, you think I should probably start with the filet mignon, right? Usually, that's the best part. Well, yeah, for most people, that's the more desirable side of the meat. Oh, look at that. And I got this cooked medium rare. And I like to taste a little bit of that blood. How does that look, Sam? That's nice. Yeah, so I'm going to do a little dip in our sauce here. Wow, look at that. The potatoes are prepared very well. Yeah, I think they have, it's a rosemary potato medley. The steak is cooked to near perfection, but I do need to try both cuts of the meat from each side. So let me get just a small piece of New York strip. Now this doesn't look as rare, but as I get into it, I'm sure the center, it's a very big I feel like I know steak. somebody who would want to have a taste of this. Frank? Yes. We always bring Frank home a little something. Now with this cut of steak, it has a good crust of fat around the edges, which is what you want for some flavor. The filet side is very tender. And the potatoes and carrot cook incredibly well. High end delicious. I don't get a Mediterranean feel from this. It feels more American to me, but it's good. Favorite steak in Disney? We've had so many good steaks, Sam. It's hard for me to compare it to all the good ones we've had. But this is a very good porterhouse. One of the better ones I've had for sure. Restaurants. I'm gonna give this a solid eight. A what? I mean, an eight. Oh. Because I think we've gotten, we've given two eights tonight for the entrees. Definitely upscale food. And um, I didn't eat more of it and see how the dessert stacks up. They certainly shined right here with the entrees. I did some work on my plate here and I think I'm gonna leave this chunk for Frank. That's going home. All right, we did just get the dessert menu. Uh, a lot of interesting options. I really do like chocolate, so the chocolate cake is speaking to me. But they also have a cannoli, um, a pistachio, car, I'm not saying I say that right, carelli, Greek yogurt cheesecake, and a walnut cake. All right, they did provide us complimentary orange limoncello, which matches your dress quite nice there, Sam. The limoncello is strong, so we had, we had the limoncello in uh, Italy. It was so good. That was probably my favorite we've ever had. Yeah, it's very, it is very strong. It's very citrusy <laughs> and it's very strong. You're going to be in a good mood tonight. Am I? That can go one or two. One or two ways, that's true. You get a little spicy when you get a little. Um, I like it. I mean, it's not something that I would. How's the citrus? It's very citrusy. Yeah. It's like, but you taste the citrus first, but then you just, I feel like you just taste like vodka. Like it just. I really feel like, like citrus and vodka go well together. Like an orange like juice and like, vodka. It hits citrus first, and then it's like, ooh, vodka. Like very, yeah. like <laughs> very strong. One out of ten. I would give it a five. Okay, that's that's your I your five. Like the traditional lemon cello better. Okay, I could get the sourness adding up a bit more to it. So this looks like a fairy tale dessert, Sam, right? It does. I feel like it looks like something Snow White would eat at, at the end of the Happily Ever After meal. Uh, so this is their chocolate flourless clit cake, right? It is the Amaro flavored Soco Latina. What's in it? Layered flourless chocolate sponge cake, dark chocolate mousse, and chocolate sauce. Okay. Um, I think I'm just going to take this off because it's just... It's good dark chocolate, but it's just dark chocolate. Look at the little berries on the side. Right, let's see. Let's see how it flakes off. I'm trying to get that bottom. Bottom is a little stiffer. I want to get all the flavors, so let's get a little bit of that. Mmm. You know what's been the flavor, Sam, of like the past month for us? Four desserts? 
that jelly ring flavor. Yes, it's like the chocolate and raspberry. And when I saw that, I said that looks like the third dessert we got in Arcuzzi's. A lot of similarities with Narcuzzi's here. This opened before Narcuzzi's did. I do think this, the food here was amazing, by the way. There was just something about the Narcuzzi's food we had that tasted a little bit higher quality. Um, everything in Narcuzzi's. You had you some tens here. Uh, this is an attempt, but it's very good. I'm a fan of chocolate. Uh, I like flowerless chocolate, chocolate cakes too, because I just think that the bitterness of the chocolate goes very well. Um, just the, the way that the cake, uh, the texture of the cake is. And then these little berries on the side here, they give it like they're like a raspberry type of flavor. So it tastes like a jelly ring. It's really good. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm going to go with the another eight. Like, very high quality, very good. Just, I mean, it's a J dessert too. So, yeah, but yeah, again, my flavor. And uh, I like jelly rings. So, Maybe just need to, maybe to buy, need to buy more jelly rings, Sam. <laughs> I love jelly rings. Yeah, they're good. All right, that was a good meal. Um, I think I, I was a bit surprised, actually. And I like the open kitchen plan they have. All right, so that does it for our time dining at Amare inside the Swan Reserve. Been looking forward to going to this restaurant. Um, I do want to say uh, I'll start off with the decor. Uh, it is reminiscent of. I feel like the current Narcuzzi's decor. I think you brought yeah, that up, right? Yeah, no, it looked very similar. Yeah, this restaurant does predate Narcuzzi's. Uh, well, the renovation. Yeah, the predate the Narcuzzi's renovation. Narcuzzi's predates the actual restaurant. Um, I think that the food at Narcuzzi's was a bit higher caliber, although that is a signature Disney restaurant. This being the signature Swan Reserve restaurant and still a very high quality meal. I am not knocking the quality of this meal. So that Narcuzzi's, I believe, they just reopened. They have that new or that, that chef from Victorian Alberts that made that amazing um, ocean-inspired char charcuterie board. Mm. Um, but for me, the decor is just, just too modern. I like fun aesthetics. I thought, like, I thought the service was amazing. Um, our server, Luis, was great. Yes, I Luis was amazing. Yeah, one of the best servers we've had in Disney. Yeah, so. and we love the food. I just feel like this restaurant is missing something. Mm. Yes. Just the decor-wise. I don't, like... I just it's just too modern almost like it's I feel like I've seen that resort everywhere you know what I mean like or not resort I should I've seen that aesthetic yeah everywhere it just needs you know? something to make it pop or make it just like, I yeah. just feel like there's so much competition in this area obviously yeah. and this should have been maybe a rooftop dining or there yeah they, maybe... you can't go to the rooftop the rooftop looks like it's beautiful from up here they're really feel like there should be a rooftop restaurant. I just feel, and it's not place. a really big restaurant either. Yeah. It's pretty small. Yeah. Uh, but it just, it just, it just needed, it needed something. I something mean, as far as, we're just, talking about just, decor. Just for yeah. it to kind of stand out, like in comparison to everything else. Yeah. Where I do think it, it, a good point that they have for them is the Mediterranean cuisine. Because I yeah. feel like there are so many steakhouses on Disney property. As far as Mediterranean food goes, it is definitely the best I've had in the Florida, in Florida area. Yeah, definitely, for um, sure. The, the steak was incredible. Uh, the uh, pup, I'm not going to say Palpetta? it right. Palpetta? Um, that, well, I don't think was as good. Because I think it was just too much saffron for me. So I'm going to knock that down to a six. Uh, but the steak was the a solid were, eight. Eight is very good. high for us, by the way. I, I try to be selective on what we give tens. Tens is like something like if you're in the area, this is like a must get for this spot. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll try to maybe do a video where we try to, I think that people have been bringing up that maybe it's a little confusing our number system. So maybe we'll do a video where we describe what, why we give each number mm -hmm. something. But a five is supposed to be just like average. Um, a four below average. Three, not good. Two, ew. And one, not fit for human consumption. Yeah, consumption. Those are just for sex flags. Yeah. <laughs> those numbers. Yeah. Um, although we, we are pretty, uh, I wouldn't we're, say we're, scared. I think we're generous. We're conservative. Yeah, we're sounds generous. I think, we're, yeah. I think we're generous. I think that outside of the vlog too, I just think that we're positive people. Yeah. So I feel like. And we like it, to eat. Yeah. I feel like even if we don't really like something, like we'll still like. Yeah be polite about it because maybe it's just it's not a flavor we like but maybe someone else will I like it. food too sometimes I, I just like putting <laughs> eating things you know what I mean like so <laughs> sometimes I'm just happy and I give things higher numbers uh, but I will say that the steak was high quality a solid eight um, perfect amount of fat uh, melt in your mouth uh, great uh, red wine uh, reduction the, red, yeah, the sauce, that sauce was, was so good was very good but like also with 
coming here, like you're not gonna get that. It's not Disney vibes here. Yeah, no, it's completely. modern hotel vibes. Yes, it's not. So and the dessert was if, good you, too. if you're on a trip, is it worth going out of your way for? That's up to you. Like, do yes. you, are you really want a Mediterranean food? If you like Mediterranean food, food and you're at Disney, yes. I would say come here. Um, that that's what would be my suggestion. And there's a very extensive wine uh, yes. menu and wine tasting. See all the wines when you first walk in. That's another thing too. Is I feel like you always see the stack of wines. I feel like when you see that, you're like, hey, you're in a fancy restaurant. Here's all the wine. Yeah, we have our wines on display. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the dessert was amazing. Uh, tasted just like a jelly ring. Your food, very good. Definitely, if you're in the area, if you like Mediterranean food and if you're in Disney, this Definitely is the spot Florida. Suggest. I mean, yeah. like- And in live, Florida like, too. Like we live here, so like, the comp like this is a good Mediterranean yeah. spot. And service was impeccable, amazing. So uh, thank you so much to our uh, server, our waiter. Um, great hospitality, um, you know. <gasps> We didn't get our parking validation. We didn't get our we parking go validated. So we gotta go do that. <laughs> We're not adding another thirty dollars onto yeah, this. Let's go get that done. And there is no uh, like pass holder discounts or DVC discounts. Oh, because it's a Marriott. This is a Marriott. Yes. So if you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Liking will really help our channel grow. It pushes this video out into the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm. Helps other people find the video. Subscribing it also helps our channel grow. Hit the bell notification so that way you're notified every time the videos come out, which is when Sam. Every Monday and Thursday. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Don't count the days. The days count. We will see you next time. That's all, folks. All right. The boy is getting the porterhouse. Oh, that looks good, Sam. I might want to steal a little bit for me. <laughs> Shake that plate out. I have a cut on it. I'm eating some. It's for Frank, Jason. I found a little bit. All right, nice and fine. All right, here it is, Frank. New York Strip. Or how? Oh, it's oh, that's the. That's, I gave him the New York Strip part. I already Jesus. explained the non part. Can I put it down? Can you? She put it down. <laughs> He's going crazy. Just, just give it to him. He's very happy. This guy likes steak. He's looking for more. That's it, buddy. I wish I had more too. Mm -hmm.